Good evening. We have two meetings scheduled for tonight. The first is the rescheduled city council meeting from January 22nd, I believe. And then the second will be the regular committee of the whole meeting. So I'd like to call to order the city council rescheduled meeting. Um, will the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Wu. Here. Mr. Evans. Here. Ms. Hersey. Ms. Colasetti. Here. Ms. Bishop. Here. Ms. Wilkin. Here. Mr. Quisenberry. Here. Mayor Marlin. Here. And for the record, Council Member Wilkin is attending remotely, and this is Monday, February 5th, 2024. Next item is approval of minutes from the previous meetings, uh, special meeting on November 6th, and the regular meeting on November 13th. I move Motion. approval of those two meetings. Your second. I second. Moved by Mary Alice, seconded by Chandra. Are there any substantial changes? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same aye. sign. That motion passes. Next item are changes or additions to the agenda. Chandra? Yes, I'd like to um, remove the discussion um, item L1. Um, since we already had our meeting on the goes, I assume that we will have another um, public meeting once the goals have been revised. And yes. so I think the discussion can take place then. Yes, you'll get the updated goals for at an at a upcoming council meeting for discussion and vote. Okay, so we'll remove item L from the agenda. Next item on the agenda are presentations and public input. There are no presentations scheduled for tonight. Can I get a show of hands for people who want to provide public input at this meeting? I think we're close enough to 20. So we're gonna go for three minutes per person so that everyone is ensured of getting a chance to speak. So if you'd like to speak to the Urbana City Council, please step up to the microphone. We may need to lower that mic. Um, and please state your name for the record. I'll begin. Uh, my name is Matthew Murray. I'm a 30 year resident of Urbana. Um, I'm in Ward 5, and I just wanted to uh, give my very strong approval of this city going on record in support of a ceasefire to stop the ongoing genocide that is occurring in Gaza against Palestinians done by the U.S. with U.S. support and weaponry. Um, and I, I think we should join the cities of Chicago and St. Louis and other cities in the U.S. to make our voices heard that we do not want any more of our tax money, money that could be spent and is needed for our cities, to be sent to other countries to kill 30,000 plus defenseless human beings, to kill over 10,000 children, to impose famine and starvation upon them, to destroy their hospitals, their schools, their shelters. I'm uh, utterly ashamed that our country is doing, supporting this as a human being. It is in no way bringing the hostages home to Israel and to the United States. It is in no, no it doesn't even remotely represent self-defense. It is a shameful period in our history and I want no part of it, and I think our city should speak out strongly to say we, at the very least, demand an immediate ceasefire and a political solution to this problem that did not begin October 7th, but began at the turn of the uh, 20th century and really got started in 1948 and could be resolved peacefully. Thank you. Hi, my name is Emily McCown, uh, Urbana resident. Um, a few weeks ago and over these last few weeks, a frequent argument I'd like to address is whether or not this ceasefire proposal is city business. Some have argued that this proposal is a waste of city time and energy and it only serves to divide us. 
and prevents the real city business. I really appreciate the hard work of public servants like yourselves, and I truly believe that the works of the Urbana City Council or, and I'm asking you if you truly believe that the works of Urbana City Council has no effect on the world beyond. What a devastating worldview that must be, one where our city dealings have no impa impact on the world around us. I'm going to guess that even if you and I disagree on political issues or approach, there is something inside every one of you that believes your work matters, not just for Urbana or Champaign or Illinois, the Midwest, but the country and the undeniably interconnected world we're a part of. Reuters reported last week that 70 municipalities have passed ceasefire resolutions. College towns like ours, leading the charge like Iowa City, Lawrence, Kansas, Ann Arbor, and Madison. There's a lot of towns in California, Laguna Beach, Richmond, Hollister, Folsom, and Brentwood. New England too, uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut, Wilmington, Delaware, Cambridge, Massachusetts, Portland, Maine, and Providence, Rhode Island, to name a few. There's sure plenty on the coast. More like Olympia, Bellingham, Washington, Carborough and Greensboro, North Carolina, Newburgh and Albany, New York, Patterson and Holliden, New Jersey. But it's not just the coast. It's also towns in the Midwest, too. Coralville, Iowa, Dearborn, and Kalamazoo, Michigan, alongside Akron and Dayton, Ohio, plus Red Lake Nation and Little Hastings, Minnesota, near where I grew up. And it's not just these little towns all over the country, but it's the big cities, too, you heard of. Oakland, San Francisco, Seattle, Atlanta, Georgia, Detroit, Minneapolis, St. Louis, and now Chicago, as of last week. You know Urbana City Council does not govern in a vacuum. Other city servants, much like yourselves, across the country have sat through the endless meetings, the tense debates, sifted through countless emails, and affirmed that we can and should value the voices of the people on the local level to collectively move the needle towards global change and real peace our global neighbors desperately need. Thank you. Hey there, everybody. My name is Ben Jocelyn. Uh, I'm here once again. I came before you for the first time on October 16th, expressing my dismay, my concern, my heartbreak about what had happened in the world. I told you that I was afraid not only for what had happened already, but what I saw coming. I was afraid that this would spread to greater world war. And just since we talked last week, American service members, or not last week, but several weeks ago, several American service members have died in Jordan, off the coast of Yemen. We've bombed Yemen, we've bombed Jordan, we've bombed Syria. We have international tensions that are just growing over and over. We have mass starvation. The people of Gaza don't have enough food, 2.3 million of them, almost half of them children, which means somewhere between 800,000 and 1,001 1 million children are starving because of the direct actions of the United States government, which refuses, along with Israel, to entertain a ceasefire, which would allow for proper humanitarian aid to make it to those children. We know about the lasting damage that happens when you are malnourished as a child. That kind of damage isn't reversible. That isn't something we can say, oops, sorry, later about and solve then. That is something we need to solve now. This hasn't been an easy few weeks. There's a number of folks who think that I'm out here trying to spread hate and I'm trying to do something awful. I'm sincerely sorry to the ages of trauma that any folks have experienced, that the Jewish people have experienced, that have led them to be so fearful in this moment. But this moment is not about the Jewish people. This moment is about the starving children of Gaza. This moment is about the starving women and men and non-binary people of Gaza. 
if we thought this war was between Hamas and Israel, if we thought it was a war, they wouldn't have gone into the last university that had not been bombed and plant mines. They didn't just bomb it accidentally. They planted mines and then blew it up in a controlled demolition. Of the 36 hospitals that were in Gaza, there are only nine that are partially functional because all of them have been destroyed. Joe Biden went in front of the nation and said, we know for a fact that Al-Shifa Hospital is the headquarters of Hamas. And when all the news teams went and all the smoke cleared, they didn't find any evidence. They still tried to say, oh, maybe it was a node, maybe it was something. But they bombed that hospital, they killed those physicians, they killed those children, and nothing is happening. Our government is sponsoring this slaughter, and it is not okay. Hello. Hello. My name is uh, Julie Watkins, and I'm an Urbana resident, and I am also in favor of a ceasefire pro proclamation in some form. Um, but what I wanted to address, speak was um, t about is uh, on, on January 15th, there was somebody who objected to someone else saying that the amount of money being sent to Israel wasn't that much and it didn't have a local effect. Well, on the first case, the bad use is still unaccessible, uh, is unacceptable. And then uh, for the second case, if you add all the money that USA spends on militarism, it does have an effect locally. There are 750 foreign um, USA military bases all over the world in 159 countries. There's about 450 um, domestic military bases and how expensive that all is and how polluting, some of the worst polluting comes out of war and practice for war and that it, 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 affect, it affects climate change. And at any rate, um, about Half of what the electeds in D.C. vote about to spend it winds up going to the military. It's more than half. Um, there's public support for less money spent on war and militarism. And yet the lobbies over there um, that, are, you know, the, the, the war profiteering companies want to make sure that the politicians that are elected are pro-war so they can keep getting their profits. Um, in the meanwhile, people die from COVID and other illnesses. They, um, they're, they're homeless, their lives are shortened by poverty, and we really need to stop this upside down budget priorities. There are more communities in the United States than there are electeds who are, are voting the, this upside down priority, and we, really would like to have the voice of Urbana be part of the thing, asking for a different priority. Um, the spending for militarism just keeps going up and up in DC and social spending keeps getting more austerity and that's wrong, thank you. My name is Sam Ilfroylan, a resident of Urbana, Ward 4. As a Jew, I am sick and tired of the veil of anti-Semitism being used as a scare and intimidation tactic to stop organizing and activism that aims to liberate Palestinians from oppression and occupation and or to stop the ongoing slaughter in Gaza. The consequence of the strategic and cynical use of accusations of anti-Semitism to discredit pro-Palestinian and pro-peace organizing or sentiments is that the real threat of anti-Semitism from, for example, white nationalists and neo-Nazi groups who plot things like the Tree of Life synagogue massacre gets pushed to the margins, leaving the Jewish community less safe. Furthermore, as a Jew, but also a human being with a conscience, I'm appalled at the ongoing slaughter, destruction, and genocide of the people of Gaza, which is being justified in the name of Judaism and supported by American tax dollars and politicians. The Judaism that I know is one dedicated to compassion and justice, Tikkun olam and tzedakah, not bloodshed, vengeance, and oppression. That my religion and identity is being used as a pretext 
and justification for immorality is disgusting. I'm here today to call upon the Urbana City Council to join with other cities across this country and pass a resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. I'm asking the Urbana City Council members to stand up to bad faith smears of anti-Semitism and to trust in their own moral conscience that knows that the slaughter of tens of thousands of people, including of over 10,000 children, is inhuman and deeply immoral. The state of Israel and its right wing, Islamophobic government does not have a monopoly on Judaism, nor should it have a vice grip on the morality of our nation. Condemning Israel's actions and calling for the end of bloodshed should not be controversial, and I feel confident that the majority of Urbana agrees. Thanks. My name is Frederick Hancock. I am a uh, resident of Urbana. And I am here to say that I strongly support a ceasefire in Gaza. Over 27,000 people have been killed, as we all know. This did not need to happen. This was, this is a genocidal onslaught. We in the U.S. and our allies are pumping money into this genocidal operation. And we, it is because of the power that the U.S. and its allies hold in international organizations that Israel is able to operate with impunity. If, you, if any of us think that we have no power in this, that is simply wrong. We have, as residents of the United States, we have more power than almost anyone uh, anywhere else in the world to stop this because we have the ability to tell our government that we are not okay with this operation. We are not okay with genocide. I hope that we, as the residents of the city of Urbana, can show that we are not on the side of genocide. Thank you. Hi there. <clears throat> I'm Dr. Persephone hernandez Vote. I am a brand new resident of Urbana and I'm wondering if I wanna stay. And one of the factors in this, I've lived in several of the cities mentioned that have passed strong resolutions in support of a ceasefire. I could move back, I'd rather stay here. Our democracy isn't doing so great. <laughs> a lot of us have seen pretty severely undemocratic things happen over the past you know, six years or so. And this right here, this body right here, is a place where people within the community in theory have access to the democratic process in a way that we do not on a state level, that we do not on a national level, that we do not on a global level. Again, I'm new here. I've never actually been to an Urbana City Council meeting before. I'm wondering if this attendance is typical. If the question is, is ceasefire germane to the Urbana City Council, I would posit that Right here, we see people who are coming to their representatives, who are coming and begging and asking and entreating you all to listen and to make a decision that will allow Urbana to stand with the people who are experiencing horrible, horrible situations, who are being slaughtered, who are being killed. Um, and this is our chance. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kate Kruswick and I am a resident of Urbana. Um, first, I want to say thank you to the council people who have supported this resolution. I strongly support this resolution. Um, and I know we keep throwing numbers at you. Um, almost 30,000 people have died. 
um, and I want to share with you a story today that would give you more perspective. I want to share with you today the story of Hind. Um, she's a six-year-old girl who just last week um, was fired upon by the IOF. Her family was traveling by car to evacuate Gaza City to go to a hospital for safe shelter, and the IOF hit their car and killed all of her family members. She was stuck in that car, a six-year-old girl, alone, for hours, surrounded by the dead bodies of her family. The Palestinian Red Crescent, which is a society that, or an organization that has been offering life-saving medical um, services, tried to get to her, but was not, let, was not allowed to get to her for hours until that night by the IOF. Yes, the IOF, Israeli Oppression Forces. Um, so later that night, two um, ambulance workers, Yusuf and Ahmed, went to go save this little girl, and they have not been heard from since. That was one week ago. It's been seven days since Hind, Yusuf, and Ahmed were heard from. We don't know what happened to them, if they're still alive, but we do know that if, we, if the US had called for a ceasefire one week ago, they would still be alive. This is our chance to put our voice in and pressure our government to call for a ceasefire to save lives. This six-year-old girl may, may be dead because we have not called for a ceasefire. I urge you to use your power because you do have power. And I urge you to use it to call for peace, to call for a ceasefire, and to call for stopping the genocide. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Benjamin Cosman. I'm a Urbana resident of Ward 7, and I'm here to speak against a resolution for a ceasefire. The city council should not be considering this resolution. It has a job that it is elected to do and paid to do and has experience doing, and that is to improve the city of Urbana. But if we have to debate this resolution, then I urge you to vote no. A ceasefire would, in the very short term, appear to be saving lives, but Hamas is a terrorist organization whose goal is to kill Israelis. This was written out in their founding documents, and this goal has been demonstrated by their actions over many years, most recently, of course, by their horrific attacks of October 7th. And so, if Hamas remains in power, and if they are given time to rebuild their arsenal and rebuild their tunnels that Israel is currently destroying, then in one year or two years or five years, Hamas will strike again, and we will be back in the same situation with many more dead on both sides. So if you truly want to save lives, both Israeli lives and Palestinian lives, the only way we will get that lasting peace is if there is no ceasefire until Israel removes Hamas from power. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Christopher Davis and I'll be reading a statement on behalf of a friend and colleague. Hello, my name is Alexa Urquhart and I'm a resident of Urbana, Illinois. I am a graduate assistant and a barista here in town. I've come to enjoy living here and the quirks that come with living in such a new area. Although I cannot be with you all in person, I took the time to write this message in favor of a permanent ceasefire in Gaza and immediate humanitarian aid for the people of Palestine. As I am writing this, today would mark 122 days of an entire population being besieged and under attack, denied the access to the essentials for survival, bombed in their homes, shelters, hospitals, and places of worship. This is unacceptable. According to Al Jazeera, every hour in Gaza, 15 people are killed. Six of them are children. 35 people are injured. 42 bombs are dropped and 12 buildings are destroyed every 60 minutes. There is no water, no access to menstrual hygiene products, doctors operating on patients without anesthesia, children who have passed away without even being named by their parents due to the violence that is currently ongoing. It is my sincere hope that Urbana will move forward with the statement in support of a permanent ceasefire. The graduate employee organization, the union here at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign was able to pass a ceasefire statement with an overwhelming 83% approval rate. And my hope is that the city of Urbana will follow suit. The continued silence on this issue speaks volumes and sends a very clear message to the residents of Urbana that the city is willing to turn a blind eye to civilian suffering both here and abroad. You as a city 
house people from all walks of life, and a statement will show that Urbana cares about our Middle Eastern, Palestinian, and Jewish citizens as well. Our words have power, and our actions even more so. I urge the city of Urbana to call for a permanent ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. Thank you. Itai Segev, 410 West Florida Avenue. In addition to Urbana citizenship, I hold both US and Israeli citizenship. I also have Palestinian friends, all of which is a long way of saying that I am greatly concerned about the situation in Gaza. While I have many criticisms of the actions of the current Israeli government, both before and after the attack by Hamas, I do not think this body should be adopting a ceasefire resolution. I certainly cannot support the resolution whose draft was included in the city council agenda last month. A claim I have heard in a previous meeting was that the precedence was set when the City Council adopted a resolution regarding the Iraq War some two decades back. A key difference between that situation and the present one is that neither the pro-war nor anti-war side felt physically threatened by the other. This is certainly not the case in the current discussion of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, where both sides feel physically threatened by the other. Considering such a resolution will only further inflame tensions as both sides gear up for a continuous fight. As for the resolution itself and why I find it hateful and I cannot support it, I wish to focus on two words, colonialism and apartheid. To describe Israel as a colonial state is to ignore the fact that the Jewish people have lived in the land of Israel nearly continuous for some three millennia and that the presence has been unbroken for well over a millennium. Moreover, it completely ignores the fact that while there was organized migration of Jews from Europe, mostly Eastern Europe, that brought some tens of thousands of Jews into the area of present-day Israel, the overwhelming majority of Israeli Jews today are descendants of refugees, be it from the pogroms of Russia and Eastern Europe, the Holocaust, or the expulsion of Jews from Arab and Muslim-majority countries in the 1950s and 1960s. Now for apartheid. Apartheid is a system of racial segregation in which an oppressed ethnicity is denied any real rights or representation in government. There were no blacks in the South African government of the middle late 20th century. The Israeli-Palestinian division is a political one, not a racial one. In 1948, those Palestinians who remained in Israel were given Israeli citizenship and full civil rights. They and their descendants have served in parliament and as ministers, as officers in the Israel Defense Forces, and even as judges of the Israeli Supreme Court. Those Palestinians who remained in areas controlled by Jordan and Egypt at the end of the 1948 conflict, the areas today commonly called the West Bank and Gaza respectively, were not given citizenship by their Arab brothers and today remain essentially stateless. This is a great injustice that must be remedied, but it is not apartheid, nor is it um, a situation entirely of Israel's making. Thank you. I'm Mark Sneer, I'm a resident of Urbana, and I must say that I am really frightened by the level of hate to the state of Israel that I see and listen to it here. Of course a resolution for ceasefire, of course a ceasefire in Gaza is highly desirable, but the resolution is not a resolution in support of ceasefire, it's a resolution on condemnation of Israel and support for Hamas. Let me remind people here that both sides of this conflict, both Hamas and Israel, are willing, are eager, are negotiating for a ceasefire. The difference is that Hamas is willing to have a ceasefire, but not to release any of the, uh, of the Israeli citizens it has uh, picked and Israel is willing to have a ceasefire. Uh, Hamas wants also Israel to get out of the Gaza Strip and not release any of the hostages. Israel wants a ceasefire, but is not willing to get out of the Gaza Strip. So supporting ceasefire, sure, what can be bad in a ceasefire? Supporting an unconditional ceasefire, which doesn't require that hostages be freed doesn't feel any need to condemn the desire of Hamas to see the state of Israel disappear, doesn't push for peace, doesn't push for support of the national aspirations of the two people between the river and the sea. 
the Jewish people and the Palestinian people, such a declaration is not a declaration for peace, not a declaration in support of peace in the Middle East. It's a declaration in support of a terrorist organization, which is also opposed to uh, United States and is also inimical and has taken US hostages, let's not forget. So please, if you, need to, if you want to push for a ceasefire, do so, but do so in a way that promotes the peace in the Middle East, not in a way that strengthens a terrorist organization which is bent on the destruction of the Jewish state. Hello, my name is Max Rizzo and I'm a new resident here. I'm a physics graduate student at the university and I am a state employee. I'm a here not on behalf of physicists and scientists and people who advocate for the general well-being, but on behalf of Palestinians, Jordanians, and other Muslim students in my cohort who are afraid to speak out on these topics because of fear of the Canary Mission and other Zionist organizations that specifically target students who are overly vocal with respect to human rights. As we've seen, the RNC debates quite literally say that they will go after students who use their voice, voices in relation to human rights. Not only do we have a duty to support the ceasefire and overall um, just we have a duty to do this, but we have a duty to defend students and their rights to free speech and the University of Champaign and defend each other in a nice community. This, this is a wonderful community. I've been really enjoying my, my time here so far and I, I truly believe that we can come together to pass the ceasefire. Another thing is I've been, there is absolutely violence on both sides and everybody who is, everybody who is anybody condemns the indiscriminate violence on both sides. However, to sit, to sit in the middle and say that both sides are equal in any shape or form is to completely base yourself out of reality. As a physicist, I can take a ratio, and getting into the numbers, the ratio is at least uh, exceeding 10 to 1 in the death count. There, there isn't a line of reasoning that could justify that by any shape or form. To both sides, this is to both sides not only apartheid, but slavery and other human rights struggles across the world. Let us be reminded that Hamas was rose to power in 2006. Nelson Mandela has identified it as apartheid in the late 90s. The Nakba and Naksa were in 1948 and 1967, and the Nakba did not begin or end in 1948. Thank you. Robert Silverman. I spoke on January 16th as well, and one of the things I mentioned, uh, I have a counseling practice in town, and in 1995, I was, I was one of the, ex I, w I was the executive director of the Jewish Federation here in Champaign-Urbana. In 1995, as I mentioned on January 16th, uh, the city started the UPTV uh, public access channel. It didn't take long for anti-Jewish and anti-Semitic material to be sent to the city to be shown on public access television. That was not by accident. Uh, a little bit of investigation, I discovered that there was a company out of California making anti-Semitic videos that were sending them to public access channels because once government funds are used for public access, the First Amendment is in play. Uh, because the First Amendment was in play, videos showed up. Urbana was caught in a, in a quandary. It didn't want to show the videos. It said it didn't want to show anti-Semitic videos. It recognized that there was a First Amendment requirement to do so. And the conversation, it wasn't me asking the city not to show the videos. Uh, myself, certainly the Jewish community, believes in the First Amendment and wants that to continue. The issue is, as I say here, the council realized it didn't have to cheer. What I asked of the council then, I'm gonna ask of the council now, don't take a side. Your job is not to take sides in any issue. That's the point of the First Amendment. 
this is good. Conversation is good. Your job is to find the middle ground that we can learn to live with each other in peace. And I'd say that's an educational process. What tonight is and what the past three sessions of your meetings have been has not been educational. It has not been about dialogue. It has been about something else. And that's, that is what this becomes about. I want us all to remember uh, It's good to remember what Mark Twain famously said. History does not repeat itself, but it often rhymes. What happened in 1995 with the UPTV and what is happening today has a rhyme to it. The rhyme that m some of you may not understand is what anti-Jewish and anti-Semitic material has always been throughout history. That rhyme is noticeable if you know what you're looking for. And that conversation is missing from this. So that's why I'm mentioning it here. I do want to say that the next point is worth noting. This is not, what we're talking about today is not the First Amendment like it was when you had public access TV. This is not about using government funds. This is about a political situation that people have an opinion about. And I want to say that there may be a feel-good motion to identifying with a certain group. This is not about feeling good. This is not about being drugged. This is about understanding reality, and reality is hard. This is about understanding that the difficulty of this. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello. My name is Dua Aldasuki, and I'm a local Palestinian. I've been advocating for Palestinian rights and self determination probably since birth, but seriously since college. During this time, I've been called some wild things, like anti-Semitic for literally saying my parents, my grandparents' family was forcefully expelled in the Nakba, the Palestinian catastrophe, a well-documented event in recent history. I've been called a terrorist many, many times. But most recently, I was called a waste of time, which oddly stings a little more than it should. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had more than one member of the CU community come up here and tell you sorry that those advocating for a ceasefire and Palestinian rights were wasting your time as we sat there, as I sat there. But alas, that's the nature of fighting for justice. Justice doesn't always appeal to those not affected by the injustice or those who benefit from it, right? This past weekend, we had an event at the library called A Day for Palestine, and I personally invited each of you to attend, learn more than just the little snippets and bites during public comments. I'm grateful to the few responses I received, one apologizing for being out of town, one apologizing for couldn't make it, and one attending. The other four of you must have thought that email an event, another waste of your time. During the event, we discussed the ICJ, the, or the world court case, uh, against Israel by South Africa, and I've been really thinking about that conversation. The, the World Court agreed to hear the case further, and I want you to think about what that means. It means that either what is happening right now in the occupied Palestinian territories in the Gaza Strip and what is happening to Palestinians is either genocide outright, as defined by the Genocide Convention, or so darn close that the court had to take the case to determine. And if we think about that, we're either witnessing genocide or something so closely similar that it had to be seriously investigated. Regardless, it's been a vicious 122 days since the start of the assault on Gaza, and 28 days since it was presented to you. In those 28 days, thousands more of Palestinians have died, have been killed, many of them children, 70% of them women and children. More hospitals have been bombed, more schools have been bombed, universities destroyed, lives destroyed, and I want the council, and but this council has not had the, hur the courage to call it what it is and to take a stand, no matter how symbolic, to call for its end. Please let the next speaker speak. Go ahead, please. My name is Yael Gertner. I'm here to ask that you do not consider bringing forward this divis divisive resolution calling for a ceasefire. The Jewish community is experiencing this resolution as a threat. 
Remarks in this room in favor of it in the past few weeks were filled with anti-Semitic tropes, which can directly lead to increase in anti-Semitism in our local community. Please don't take lightly our cry for help against rising anti-Semitism. My grandparents are Holocaust survivors. The memory of the Holocaust and what they experienced is something that's always on the forefront of my mind. How can I ever forget the trauma that happened to my family for no reason at all, except they were Jewish? My grandparents managed to escape from the ghetto and survived. The rest of their community was eradicated. Why was this communi community that lived in Kovno, Lithuania, for 400 years eradicated? Because the Nazis committed genocide against the Jews. They went all the way from Germany to Lithuania and tried systematically capture every single Jew and intentionally eradicate entire Jewish communities while their neighbors stood and watched. I'm asking you today, never again, Never again should we stand by silently and let anti-Semitism rise, hoping it will not get worse, because we know how worse it can get. I have not forgotten, I cannot forget. I'm asking you to be a different neighbor, a conscientious neighbor, a neighbor that reaches out and helps our community when we face anti-Semitism. Standing here before you in the past few weeks were the leaders of the Jewish community, the rabbi from Sinai Temple, the executive director, president, and vice president of the Champaign-Urbana Jewish Federation all spoke against this resolution. They've all stood here, represented our community, and speaking and asking you not to bring forth this resolution. They represented not a single view. People in the Jewish community have a variety of nuanced opinions, and they represent different political views. But our leaders represented a plea that our community stands united behind that we experience this resolution as a threat to us here in Urbana. You might have heard a few Jewish individuals who spoke in favor of the resolution representing their personal opinion, or from non-Jewish individuals quoting a Jewish friend. It's flawed to consider these single individual opinions as a representative of the voice of the Jewish community. And the Jewish community has a voice. It is united. It knows what it stands for. It has clear values and beliefs that are defined by the Bible and our tradition. What is that voice? How do you know what it is? That's why we have clearly identified leaders. These leaders speaks for us and our entire community, uh, which with its multitude of opinions and views. Our leaders have conveyed to you a message that our community is united behind, that this resolution is a threat to us. Ignoring the voice of our leadership is akin to ignoring our community. I urge you not to repeat the mistakes of history and to heed to the cries of your Jewish neighbor. Do not turn your backs on us, never again. Thank you. Hello, my name is Tanya Yonin. Um, I would like to reiterate some of the points that have already been made by others in this room. Reasons for the, for the City Council to not consider and not adopt um, the resolution that was proposed um, at the January meeting. Um, first, because this resolution is one-sided and it is divisive. It is not a resolution for a productive ceasefire that would benefit both sides, call for the release of hostages, call um, for the eradication of Hamas. It is a ceasefire that makes demands only on Israel and condemns only Israel. It does not barely mentions the hostages, it barely mentions Hamas, it makes no consideration of what will happen if there is an, a, a complete ceasefire with no release of hostages and Hamas remaining in power. Second, um, it is not the job of, this, of a city council, any city council, including the Urbana City Council, to pass international resolutions. Um, that is not the job for which the city council was elected, and passing such a resolution will make absolutely no difference to the politics in the Middle East. It will only make a difference to this community and continue to divide the community, to send the message that the views of the Jewish community are not welcome and are not considerate, given that this resolution was crafted with no input from the Jewish community, and we have heard many Jew members of the Jewish community speak, uh, including Jewish community leaders, speak against it. I therefore once again urge you not to adopt this resolution. Thank you. My name is Paul Weixell. I'm a longtime resident of both Champaign and Urbana. Let me begin by saying, I don't believe there's any person in this room or in this community that doesn't understand the horror that's going on in Gaza right now and would not be enthusiastic supporters of anything that could help alleviate that horror. On the other hand, 
there are two, two basic fallacies, I believe, in supporting this kind of resolution. First of all, and this is the primary one, we all know from the statements of Hamas, both in their founding documents and in their comments, both before and after the horror that took place on the 7th of October last year, that Hamas is committed to the destruction of Israel as a Jewish state and committed to killing Jews wherever they encounter them, anywhere in the world. That's a fact. Now, I, I know for a fact that there may be members in this community, I don't know how many, who support that. And I think that we need to at least lay the cards on the table. If you support this resolution, as has been stated many times before, that means that uh, you support a situation where Hamas will be allowed to continue building tunnels, collecting munitions, hiding behind civilians, and so on. And they've said specifically that if they have to do a ceasefire, then they'll manage somehow, but their commitment to destroy Israel and to kill Jews is unabated and will be unabated. Okay. Now, I, I, I hasten to add that I do not believe personally that any, anybody in this community or in most communities are anti-Semitic, whether you support this resolution or not. I think that's a broad brush which we'd be very, very careful in, in applying. However, I have a simple question for the, for, the Shemp, for the Urbana City Council. Do you want to go down on record as a governmental body who supports a policy whose fundamental aim is to destroy the Jewish state in Israel? Now, if that's in fact your point of view, go for it. But let's be straightforward about this. Let's not hide behind facts which are both horrible in their essence and deceiving in the way in which they're presented. Ceasefire, a short one or, or a modestly long one, will not stop the violence. And I think if you look at, if you listen to the discussions that have been had here and elsewhere, there's a tendency to, com to conflate stopping the violence with ceasefire. It simply doesn't work that way. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Chelsea Birchmeyer, and I want to share my support for a ceasefire resolution. As a Champaign-Urbana resident and a Jew, I stand strongly against genocide being committed in my name. A ceasefire resolution for from Urbana City Council will mean a lot to our CU communities in the face of the horrific deaths of nearly 30,000 Palestinians that we are funding with our tax dollars, uh, tax dollars that could be used for vital community resources. Urbana would join over 70 US cities who have spoken out calling for a ceasefire. The more cities that join in, the more pressure we build for the federal government to promote a ceasefire and stop escalating the violence. Over 60% of Americans want a ceasefire, and Urbana has been, long been a bastion of support for progressive resolutions like the one affirming um, Urbana as a sanctuary city, for example. The ceasefire resolution will make Urbana a more welcoming and safe place for all residents. I join organizations like Jewish Voice for Peace and If Not Now, as well as my fellow Jewish friends and colleagues here tonight who stand for a ceasefire and for making it clear that never again means never again for anyone. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lila Leopold. I'm an Urbana resident, and there's many things I could say. I definitely support a ceasefire resolution. Um, I'm also a dual German citizen because I reclaimed my German citizenship, which was forcibly taken from my family in 1938. I have Holocaust survivors in my family. I'm a lifelong student, and <laughs> it's like, there's so much that we have in common up to the point of what can we do now? What tiny thing can we do now? Ma'am, could you make sure you speak into the mic so it can be heard yeah, by folks yeah. at Thank home you. plus recorded? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. 
Um, and I just, I've been terrified to speak in public for, you know, for this whole fall. I am trembling. I've spent thousands of dollars on medical bills trying to speak out and do things because I've never felt more afraid of my own Jewish community and for speaking out in my own Jewish community than I ever have before in my life. And I just want and plea for the council to remember that there are many, many different opinions within the Jewish community, but the Jewish faith does not want genocide, again, for anyone. And I don't use this term slightly, you know, lightly. I'm not spreading it around because even I'm uncomfortable with it. But I do not feel under threat from my Muslim peers here or globally. We need to create the conditions for peace at home and abroad. And if I were not a dual citizen with Germany, I would not be paying my taxes. If I do not pay my taxes, I lose both my citizenship and any claims I would have to family property in Germany. So I am begging you to not spend our tax dollars our hard-earned tax dollars. I am a teaching assistant at a university. I barely get paid to begin with. I'm in the arts. I pay taxes. We're all paying ta taxes for weapons. We can't do this. We can't do this. I've never felt so unsafe as a Jew before in my life. This is not, we need to create conditions for safety for everyone. And local government has a role in this. We can debate language and words and this and that, but there are prob there's problematic language, et cetera, et cetera, <laughs> you know. But the core of this is our common humanity, and this is worth preserving and fighting for in the future. And anyone who thinks that certain people our age don't have an, a deep, deep understanding of history, I've been in school my entire life. I've studied through my family and friends and colleagues and, you know, all the Jews in New York, and they're, we are going to see even more horrible things happen to the Jewish people if we do not stand up for peace. Hello, my name is Inbar Lazar. I was born and raised in Israel, but live in the area for the last 20 years. My family live in Israel, and we all wish for peace. No one likes war, people getting hurt from all sides, including civilians. War is bad for all reasons, environment, society, economy, and more. For the people that are hearing me now, and I have family in Gaza, I feel you, I hear you, we are all together in this, I feel your pain. My family in Israel is also suffering from the war. Tens of thousands of rockets shot toward Israel since October 7. Kids are peeing in their bed, Elderly get hurt while running to shelters. The mental health of moms sending their kids to fight the war and not even talking about people that injured, raped, and killed. Israel didn't call for a war, the opposite. Until October 7, Israel treated Gaza civilians in Israeli hospitals, provided them work, water, electricity, transfer money to Gaza trying to buy peace, and more. Not the ideal situation, but much better than what they have now. On October 7, Hamas started the war, war against innocent civilians. They were ex executed, beheaded, killed, burned alive, raped, kidnapped, without any distinguish. Kids, parents, grandparents, they recorded it while being proud of their action. You can all watch it if you want. These are not freedom fighters. These are evils. You can't start a war and, uh, and ask for a ceasefire the day after without any consequences. What Israel is doing, uh, is, doing is not a revenge. Israel is trying to protect their citizens so they will be able to go back to rebuild their, uh, their homes and live there safely. Hamas is the one responsible for the Gaza situation. Hamas the one that steal the food and humanitarian aid getting into Gaza. Hamas stealing the water and use it for rockets. Hamas hide in tunnels while uh, sacrifi sacrifice their civilians. Where did Hamas get all the money to build these tunnels? Another city underneath Gaza. 
Hamas preferred to build an under, underground city instead of building a nice city for the civilians with schools, hospitals, universities, factories, and more. Hamas is bad for Gaza. The European Union, Union adopted a resolution calling for a permanent ceasefire on the condition that Hamas will dis dismantle and all hostages will be released. That is the resolution we should all call for. If you care about Gaza, and in general, if you care about human beings, all of you, let's call Hamas, the terror organization, to surrender. Hello, my name is Don Owen. I've been an Urbana-Champaign resident for 35 years. For much of that time, I taught history in the public schools. And as a social studies teacher in the public schools, I taught Holocaust education. I was also an advocate when I was president of the Illinois Council for Social Studies of the Genocide Education Act, which mandates education about all genocides. One of the poems that was provided by the local Holocaust education group was a very interesting and problematic poem because of who wrote it. It's called, First They Came. First they came for the communists, and I did not speak out because I was not a communist. And then they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. And then they came for the trade unions, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. And then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. And then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak out for me. Pastor Martin Neymuller was actually an anti-Semitic Nazi supporter who wrote this poem after he was put in a concentration camp because he would not close down his Christian church the way the Nazi party wanted him to. It's a challenging poem to address some of the contextual issues with eighth graders. The larger scope is that Holocaust education is mandated in our schools and genocide education is mandated in our schools so that we never allow it to happen again. And right now, the world court has said that this case that was brought by South Africa meets the requirements to move forward under the definitions of genocide. We need a ceasefire. The reaction has been disproportionate and what we are seeing is a genocide. I support this resolution. I'm a proud resident of this community because I've watched this body and many other elected bodies take stands on issues of social justice. I urge you to support this resolution. Good evening. I'm a member of the Champaign-Urbana community for 20 years. <clears throat> and I want to make two brief points. Sir, could you speak into the microphone a little bit closer, please? Um, first, uh, that I think it's wrong to require Israel to have a ceasefire. And secondly, that whatever one's opinion is on the subject, it is not in the interest of this uh, community to take a position on a, on a military conflict. Uh, during the winter break uh, in January, I visited Israel on a business trip and uh, a friend uh, asked me to deliver some uh, medical supplies to the IDF. And because of that, I could directly talk to a few soldiers. Uh, they were all <coughs> affected by October 7 events. Israel is a small country, and uh, there, were, there is hardly anyone who has not been affected. But nevertheless, uh, none of them expressed negative feelings to, towards civilians in Gaza. And they would not fight in Gaza if it wasn't for the Hamas, which attacked <coughs> uh, Israel on October 7, with the goal, uh, <coughs> and their goal is er eradication of Hamas. 
Unfortunately, Hamas uses civilians as human shields. Uh, one soldier told me uh, the story, and he was a real soldier, not from TikTok, that when IDF troops surrounded a school which had Hamas fighters in it, the IDF units could not enter it for a couple of days because Hamas forced children and women to stand at the school entrances. At some point, uh, Hamas fighters left the school and only then IDF could enter the school. Um, <clears throat> Israeli society is very tolerant. In Tel Aviv, you have uh, uh, Muslim people, for example, women in hijab, walk in the city uh, in a relaxed way. I, I've seen them without any fear of, uh, from the Jews or Israelis. As far as I know, uh, it would not be as easy for a Jewish person, even those uh, who talked here, to walk in a kippah in some cities in the USA, let alone in Gaza. <clears throat> Similar to what happened in our university, the pictures of hostages have been sometimes torn off by some students in Israel universities, and the students do not face uh, any punishment. My point is that Israelis are very tolerant, and the IDF is a disciplined army. Unfortunately, Israel is in a very difficult situation after October 7. Uh, it is no good choices, and only bad and very bad choices. Unfortunately, civilian deaths, which, uh, by the way, benefit Hamas, are unavoidable when fighting is in a densely populated area. The situation with hostages makes this extremely complicated military operation. Having an opinion about a ceasefire is meaningless without sufficient information about the details of the war. Regarding, thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Yerdena Shur, and I'm a resident of Urbana. My husband and I moved here from Israel almost four years ago for graduate school. And we absolutely love the city, the area, um, most of, a, um, of all the people. We felt welcomed and appreciated by neighbors and others around us. But since October 7th, this has all changed completely. Even though our neighbors and friends are extremely supportive, I've been in a constant state of unease and fear. Only days after October 7th horrific massacre, there was a demonstration calling for the eradication of Israel. I was yelled at for talking about my friend who was at the music festival and whose fate was still unknown then. And I was told that I'm spreading lies and that Hamas doesn't target civilians, and it took three weeks to identify my friend's body and for us to know what happened to him as his body was mutilated beyond recognition. Only days after October 7th, when we started putting up posters of people from our community who were taken hostage in order to raise awareness and help bring them home, they were immediately torn down by people yelling at me, telling me that this is propaganda. The posters say nothing about Palestinians. They are only blaming Hamas for their war crimes and calling for the return of the hostages. Seeing a picture of my cousin's close friend who was badly injured and taken to Gaza, getting ripped in front of my eyes, was horrifying. She is still there, a 23-year-old, injured, tortured. The person who brought the resolution for a ceasefire to discussion here, Ben Jocelyn, is one of the first people I personally saw ripping down posters that I put up. So thank you for that. This already makes me personally suspicious of his admissions. <laughs> but even if we only look at the resolution itself, it says nothing about Hamas seizing fire, about returning the hostages home, about a solution to Hamas's declared goal of using a ceasefire to regroup so he can repeat October 7th again and again, massacring, raping, torturing, and kidnapping innocent people. As an Israeli, when someone says that Israel should stop trying to destroy the organization, that vowed to eradicate me, my family, and my community, that Israel should stop trying to get the hostages back, and that apparently we should just hang back and wait for the biggest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust to repeat itself. It doesn't seem peaceful. It's frightening. This resolution completely ignores the murderous terrorist organization responsible for the deaths of Israelis and Palestinians alike. The same terrorist organization that, by the way, is not accepting the ceasefire offer that is on the table right now because they don't want to release the hostages. The truth is that innocent people, both Israelis and Palestinians, have been and are still suffering horrendously. The only way to reach a peaceful solution, the only way that this suffering can stop, is if Hamas is stopped. Um, 
Hi, my name is Ben Diabald. I'm here in support of the ceasefire resolution. I think everything that's been said uh, about in terms of that we need to end this conflict has been said. So I will just end or just leave you with a poem by a Palestinian poet na by the name of who, uh, Refi el Arir, who was killed in Gaza along with many of his members of, of his family, which is, the poem is called, I Am You. Two steps, one, two, look in the mirror, the horror, the horror, the butt of your M16 on my cheekbone, the yellow patch it left, the bullet-shaped scar expanding, like a swastika snaking across my face, the heartache flowing, out of my eyes dripping, out of my nostrils piercing, my ears flooding the place like it did to you 70 years ago or so. I am just you. I am your past haunting, your present and your future. I strive like you did. I fight like you did. I resist like you resisted. And for a moment, I take your tenacity as a model. Were you not holding the barrel of the gun between my bleeding eyes? One, two, the very same gun, the very same bullet that killed your mom and killed your dad is being used against me by you. Mark this bullet and mark it in your gun. If you sniff it, it has your and my blood. It has my presence and your past. It has my it has my present, it has your future. That's why we are twins. Same life track, same weapon, same suffering, same facial, same facial expression drawn on the face of the killer, same everything, except in, in, your, that in your case, the victim has evolved backward into a, a victimizer. I tell you, I am you, except that I am not the you of now. I do not hate you. I want to help you stop hating. And killing me, I tell you that the noise of your machine gun render your death, the smell of the powder, beats that of my blood, sparks of disfigure, my facial expressions. Would you stop shooting for a moment? Would you? All you have to do is close your eyes. Seeing these days blind, bl blinds our hearts. Close your eyes tightly so that you can see in your mind's eye that, and then look into the mirror. One, two, I am your past, and by killing me, you kill you. Thank you very much. Hi there, my name is Eda Niddle. I'm, uh, I've lived in or around the Champaign-Urbana Champaign area for my entire life. And um, now I'm privileged to be a uh, worker at the largest employer here, which is Carl Hospital. I think it's the largest employer behind the university maybe. Either way, um, every day that I go to work, I am uh, able to give back to my community in a very direct way, which is, as I mentioned, a privilege. I am also paid for it, which is great, but I'm really more excited about the fact that I can uh, know that the work I'm doing has a direct impact on somebody in my community who, because they are a part of my community, I have a great care for. The um, workers in Gazan hospitals do not have the same privilege as me. They, are, they haven't been paid, actually, since October 7th. All of them are working for free and while they are working and giving everything that they can, they are also under constant attack, bombing, and uh, multiple hospitals have been besieged. There is no way to treat patients effectively. There is no way to prevent civilian death. And there is literally no way to remove patients from or evacuate entire hospitals without mass civilian casualty happening. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I wish I had prepared more, but what strikes me every time I get updates about what is happening in Palestine is specifically uh, what's happening to those who are vulnerable within those communities and would have been vulnerable even before the attacks began after October 7th. There, the demands made by the IDF on hospitals to evacuate in order to check for tunnels or whatever are impossible and they know that it's impossible because their goal is unfortunately to cause terror and civilian death. I cannot speak, uh, I can't express how in support of this petition I am and the ceasefire resolution. I know that myself and many other members of this community want to see it happen, not just because we are virtue signaling or trying to stand behind something frivolously, but because we truly believe in everything that we have, that passing a ceasefire resolution could potentially trickle up 
to our local governments who have been ignoring us for, well, since October 7th and potentially have some impact. I really hope that speaking here today has any impact on the situation because if it had had an impact the last time that we were here, maybe hundreds of people could still be alive. That's all we're cared for. Thank you so much. Hi, good evening, uh, city council members. Uh, my name is Kermit Elazar, and I wanted to talk about um, several times what's mentioned here about the Israel standing in front of the International High Court of Justice. Israel was brought there actually by South Africa that we can discuss the reasons South Africa wanted to do that thing. I'm not sure about the Palestinians, but they had their own reasons. But the fact is that Israel is cooperating with the court is providing the information that we requested because there is nothing to hide. But the main point here, I believe, is that to remember that the International High Court for Justice does have the authority to declare a ceasefire. It has the authority to order Israel and Hamas to go into a ceasefire. But it did not. It did not use that authority. And the reason for it not using that authority, because they do not believe there's a genocide going, yes, South Africa requested Israel to come to court. Yes, there will be a trial, but the fact that there's, there's a trial doesn't mean the genocide is help, happening. And again, as I said, the court has the authority now to stop it, but they haven't called for a ceasefire, and that means a lot. That means a lot to the people here and other places which use the word genocide very lightly, a very heavy word with a tremendous meaning behind it, is being used lightheadedly and you know, just from their mouth out. A war is an ugly thing, and ugly things happen in wars. And wars should be stopped as soon as possible, but not the type of ceasefire that's being requested here, and definitely not on the grounds of genocide. The European Union, as was mentioned here earlier, also had a resolution, resolution for ceasefire. The European Union as a legislative body representing 400 plus million Europeans that also it caused for a permanent ceasefire, called for a permanent ceasefire, but under the specific request that it has uh, the dismantling of Hamas and releasing all the hostages. Otherwise, the ceasefire cannot take place. And um, the last point is around that uh, early last week, there was actually a ceasefire framework, a Paris ceasefire framework, which was done between the United States, Egypt, Qatar, and Israel participated as well, which this framework calls for a, a way for a ceasefire to happen as soon as possible. But since then, almost one week, Hamas did not respond to the ceasefire. So actually there is a ceasefire being called, and everybody's waiting for Hamas to say something about the ceasefire. Hopefully, we'll hear back from them soon. But in the meanwhile, no response. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sana Sabuwala. I'm a Urbana resident, and I'm here to speak again in support of a ceasefire, uh, this ceasefire resolution. Um, I'm sad to keep having to act like this is an issue that deserves both sides' parliamentary debate when the scale of violation of the sanctity of life is so clear. Um, today is my 28th birthday, and I'm here because I can't stop thinking about the Palestinian children who didn't even get to celebrate their first birthdays because they were murdered by the Israeli occupation forces. There's substantiated proof of these murders, and I'm not going to enumerate the human rights violations committed by Israel here. I trust that you are able to do your own research and take what we are telling you and fact check these things. Um, I moved to Urbana to do research and to teach classes. I study how historical trauma stemming from colonialism affects our bodies. I've spent almost the last decade of my life studying atrocity and what it does to our bodies. Um, with the intention that 
talking about it, teaching about it, writing about it would help people heal and stop genocide from happening. I see now that was maybe optimistic. What we are seeing and have been seeing is a genocide against the Palestinian people. Um, but I still have students who live in this community and I'd like to be able to tell them when they come to me and say they're not able to concentrate on their assignments, they weren't able to finish their homework, they were busy watching children get murdered via live stream, um, that there's something that they can do about it, that their community stands with them, that their community stands for basic human rights when they see their peers in other places standing out, up and speaking out and getting punished for it, that our local community would support them, um, that the people we live with, that we work with, that we're here with, don't wanna see genocide happening, um, and that our community, like other communities in Chicago and elsewhere, is willing to speak out in the face of injustice. Um, this ceasefire re resolution is your opportunity to speak out and stand as our representatives on the side of the ceasefire, and inaction is a, is a choice, um, and your choice to stay silent right now does speak volumes. Thank you. Hello, uh, I'm Maxwell Haynes, and I'm a resident of Urbana and a student at UIUC. I'm here alongside many of those present to provide my support for a ceasefire resolution. I know that the majority of our community and indeed the majority of the globe are pressuring their political officials to support a ceasefire. I've been touched and energized by the ability of our communities to come together and support the people of Palestine. We have had months of protests, letter writing campaigns and other actions in support of a ceasefire and beyond, some pressing for freedom from apartheid and prevention of genocides across the globe. Recently, our neighbors to the north, Chicago, has passed a ceasefire resolution as one of the largest population centers to do so in the US. And I am devout in my belief that we should follow suit. I reiterate, as I've said in previous meetings, that Africa, Ireland, Palestine have all faced these apartheids in similar ways and similar capacities. Each of these have resulted in discrimination, torture, death, and starvation for the oppressed. And since October, the Zionist regime has doubled down and begun actively seeking to commit a genocide against the Palestinian people of Gaza and the West Bank. The International Court of Justice has ruled this to be the case thanks to the efforts of South African heroes that introduced this case. Despite this, men, women, and children continue to die in an illegal, immoral, and unjust targeting of civilians throughout Gaza. Tens of thousands of people are dying and millions are now at critical levels of starvation throughout this region. With all this in mind, what do you have a, to, to lose as a city council? How many more people have to die for you to choose a stance on the right side of history? Every voice we can add creates more pressure on the international community to do what is right and prevents these governments from hiding their crimes. We cannot forget and we, can igno we cannot ignore the people of Gaza. I certainly will not forgive my representatives for these failures and I know that I'm not alone. Free Palestine, free Congo, and occupation and colonization. Ceasefire now. My name is Elizabeth Sotoropoulos, and I'm a member of this community, and I serve, uh, among other people, uh, students of Urbana Schools. I'm going to begin by reading some pieces from um, the South Africa uh, case against Israel. Um, these are uh, portions of expressions of genocidal intent against the Palestinian people by Israeli state officials and others. On, on the 7th of October, 2023, in a televised address by the government press office, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu promised to, quote, operate forcefully everywhere, unquote. On the 13th of October, he confirmed that we are striking our enemies with unprecedented might. On the 15th October, when Israeli airstrikes had already killed over 2,670 Palestinians, including 724 children, the Prime Minister stated that Israeli soldiers, quote, understand the scope of the mission, unquote, and stand ready to, quote, defeat the bloodthirsty monsters who have risen against Israel to destroy us, unquote. 
skipping ahead, on the 28th of October, as Israeli forces prepared their land invasion of Gaza, the Prime Minister invoked the biblical story of the total destruction of Amalek by the Israelites, stating, quote, you must remember what Amalek has done to you, says our Holy Bible, and we do remember, unquote. The Prime Minister referred again to Amalek in the letter sent on the 3rd of November to Israeli soldiers and officers. The relevant biblical passage reads as follows, quote, Now go attack Amalek and prescribe all that belongs to him. Spare no one but kill alike men and women, infants and sucklings, oxen and sheep, camels and asses. There's so much more that you can read. I hope you will all read that on your own time. But I want to also say that the ceasefire resolution um, has we have gathered a petition and we have over 1017 signatures of people in support of this ceasefire resolution I've been an elected official who had to take a very unpopular stance, and I'm really proud of myself for doing that because while my stance wasn't very popular at the time, it's now very common for us to say things like Black Lives Matter in our schools. I hope that you will lead this charge and have the courage that we want all of our community members to have. Thank you. My name is Josh, I'm an Urbana resident. Uh, I also have some quotes that I could read out as well from Hamas's charter. Um, Hamas believes that no part of the land of Palestine shall be compromised or conceded irrespective of the causes, the circumstances, and the pressures, and no matter how long the occupation lasts. Hamas rejects any alternative to the full and complete liberation of Palestine from the river to the sea. This is from their so-called reformed 2017 charter. Uh, which re supposedly replaced the 1988 chart, which is far more explicit in its anti-Semitism, but that right there says it all. This is not a partner for peace. I have read it all. Okay. 1988, our struggle against the Jews is very great and serious. It needs all sincere efforts. Initiatives and so-called peaceful solutions and international conferences are in contradiction to the principles of Hamas. So it's no wonder why they are uh, dragging their feet with this latest ceasefire proposal. Uh, I hope they sign it. I hope that there's peace soon, but uh, this resolution put before you is not going to advance that cause. Thank you. Does anyone wish to address the council? Hi, my name is Tav, I'm an Uban resident. And I think personally that this uh, resolution, whether it passes or not, will not cause a ceasefire. I think that most people in the room know it, but never mind, people want to say it, people want to talk about it, that's completely fine. What I know it will cause, what I know it has been causing, is fear and division. I know because I feel it as well. Now, someone here suggested that maybe my fear being Jewish is because of some uh, intergenerational trauma. Now, I don't know about the other people in the room who also expressed fear, but I think personally that my fear is stemming from the hatred that I feel, because I do feel hatred in this room. I know that there's hatred because I've seen people ripping down posters, posters doing nothing but calling for the release of hostages from the grasp of a terrorist organization. So I feel hate when I see that. I feel hate because I see people here talking about number of deaths, number of buildings destroyed, number of hospitals attacked. And every time I hear such a sentence, I add to myself, in my head, I add, because of Hamas. Citizens have died because Hamas is fighting from a civilian population, which is a war crime. Hospitals have been attacked because Hamas has built headquarters there, built tunnels underneath them. There's no food because Hamas is taking food in order to give to their friends and to their fighters. And I'm asking myself, is it actually that hard to just add a little bit one sentence saying, we hope that Hamas, a terrorist organization, will no longer control Gaza? Is it that hard to devote one sentence for, uh, of your speech to saying that a terrorist organization that is known to be a terrorist organization that has sent countless suicide bombers to kill children 
elderly, women, men? Is it that hard to say that one sentence? Because all of us do want a ceasefire. I'm actually, someone said something about 60% people want ceasefire. I'm, I'm amazed, I'm shocked. I thought it would be 90%. I want a, we all want a ceasefire. We want a ceasefire, and we also want Israel to not be under constant attack by a terrorist organization. And we all say it. We want a ceasefire. Now, one last thing is that some people have been saying that uh, they're Jewish and they don't like this. This is done in their name or, or due to Judaism. And I don't understand. I mean, I was thinking to myself, is this a Jewish war? Are we waging Jewish war? And I, and I think, no, this is, this is a humanitarian war. This is a war that's being done because of a real genocidal organization called Hamas that wants nothing more than to kill Jews. We do that to protect our lives. Countless wars have been fought to protect lives, and this is one of them. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? You can speak once. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else wish to address the council? Okay, we'll move on. Um, we did receive several emails. Um, <coughs> I'm going to enter these into the record in the entrance of time, so they'll be enter entered into the record of this meeting. Um, thank you all. We'll move on to council input and communication. Comments from council members, Chandra. Um, I attended the um, opening of the Black Joy Project at the Spurlock Museum this weekend, and I, um, in honor of Black History Month, um, I encourage everyone to go and check it out. It's a beautiful display of um, um, sort of how through the suffering um, there is black joy. And so um, I just want to encourage everyone to go and check out that exhibit. Um, at the Spurlock Museum. It's going on till December, so and every month there'll be different activities and themes around that um, project. So, thank you. Any other council comments? Okay. Oh, unfinished business, there is none. There are no reports of standing committees. We'll move on to the report from the Committee of the Whole. Mary Alice Wu. I have five items on the consent agenda. So on behalf of the Committee of the Whole, I move approval for the following on the consent agenda. Resolution number 2023-12097R, resolution approving and authorizing the execution of an economic development agreement with Experience Champaign-Urbana for fiscal year 2023-2024. And resolution number 2023-12096R, resolution approving and authorizing the execution of an economic development agreement with Champaign County Economic Development Corporation for the fiscal year 2023-2024. And resolution number 2024-01001, a resolution approving amendment number one to a City of Urbana and Urbana Home Consortium sub-recipient agreement with Champaign County Regional Planning Commission, TBRA, for agreement fiscal year 2021-2022. And ordinance number 2024-01002, an ordinance approving a major variance for Chen Tan Duplex at 312 West, Urbana, West Illinois Street, case number ZBA 2023 MAJ 03. And finally, ordinance number 2024-01003, an ordinance approving a major variance for Chen Tan Duplex at 312 West Illinois Street, case number ZBA 2023 MAJ 04. Is there a second? I'll second. Moved by Mary Alice, seconded by Jaya. Will the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Wu? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Ms. Hersey? Yes. Ms. Colasetti? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Wilkin? Yes. Mr. Quisenberry? Yes. That motion passes. There are no items on the regular agenda. We'll move on to uh, there are no reports from special committees. Reports of officers? None. 
There's no new business with item uh, L being removed from the agenda. So with no further business before this council meeting, we stand adjourned and we'll move on to the committee of the whole meeting as soon as clerk is ready.